Hey everyone, welcome to the Tapes Podcast, the most least possible <laughs> podcast in the world. We are your hosts, myself, Mickey T. I'm Nostalgia. Um, are the guests... Do we introduce the guests or will they introduce themselves? Yes, we do! <laughs> God damn it. This is a good Well, I'll, I'll introduce the guests. We uh, actually have two guests today on the Taped Podcast. We have a couple of users on Album of the Year. We've uh, gotten contact with them. They wanted to be on this. Mm. So we uh, like to introduce Maureen. Woo. Hello. Making our second appearance on the podcast. You appear for the quiz. And making his first appearance on the Taped Podcast, Conor One. Conor, welcome to the Taped Hello. Podcast. Also known as Panera Bread. Also known as Panera Bread. Also known as Panera Bread. Hell yeah. So Mick, so what are we doing? We are going to be ranking every single solo studio album from Sun Kill Moon. That isn't a Ladies cover Ladies and album. gentlemen, that is not a cover album. Mm. And it's pretty simple. We have nine albums to go through. And I think we should just stop wasting time and uh, yeah, get right into it. So, what was our, your number nine pick, Nostalgia? Um, sorry, I'm, uh, I need to get my notes up. I should have probably done that. Okay. Uh, my number nine pick is... Maybe I should go last for this. Mine's a bit controversial. Oh, shit. Um, fine, I'll go. Um, my number nine pick is This Is My Dinner. Is it nine or eight? Hold up. Nine, isn't it? Nine. Yeah, it's oh, nine. I, <laughs> I, I have four in twice. For me. My number nine pick is I Also Want to Die in New Orleans. Uh, my number nine yeah. pick. Wait, did Devin go? Panera Bread, go. Oh, my number nine spot is also I also want to die <laughs> in New Orleans. Um, my number nine spot is Common is Light and Love. Mm. Ooh, <laughs> that is spicy. Sorry, Fantano. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine's um, coming <laughs> for your kneecaps. <laughs> The melon will ascend and will try find you to hunt you down for not liking this album. I'll never be forgiven. Uh, I'll, should I go no. first then? Still. Yeah. Um. I mean, where do I start? It's <laughs> it's it's got some really good tracks. It you know in its two hour length there are a lot of highs. Um. But just think the gaps in between those tracks are filled with quite a number of you know really uninteresting. Sometimes just bland and derivative tracks. Um, just it feels too bloated. Some of the tracks just feel like they're meandering too slowly. Uh, Mark's storytelling is either really interesting and engaging or just boring and tedious. Um, the length, I, I think, is my biggest gripe. It just doesn't really do the album any favors, in my opinion. Um, if it was only the tracks I, I did care for, which would have still been quite a long album, I, I still think it's okay. And for the most part, it is filled with decent tracks. Uh, then it would have still been a good album, but it's just, there's so many tracks on here that I don't care much for, that I just, if I was to listen to, I would probably just skip over or just zone out on. I just don't think Mark's storytelling, his um, instrumental performances, anything really is on peak form here. And just feels like a, a bit of an awkward, bloated mess. Okay, uh, yeah, I chose uh, This Is My Dinner, and um, this record uh, has a pretty cool concept, actually. It's basically Mark telling stories about his touring life that went on in Europe, and I had hope at the beginning as I really liked the first two tracks in the album, but god, it just got so grating as it goes on, as Mark just keeps going on and on and on and on and on about these stories he tells, and... They just annoy the shell me because of how long and drawn out they are. Normally, this wouldn't annoy me on some of the other albums that just come up um, later on. But I just feel like the production on this album doesn't do it any justice either. You know, it's it's fine across the board, but it's just ruined for the continuous rambling that, that Mark goes on through the duration of these tracks. And I, I, like I said, I do like the first two songs, but nothing else after that really stands out to me. And I don't really have much else to say about this record besides that. 
So I got I also want to die in New Orleans. Um I didn't dig this thing. Like it just kind of felt like Mark was reading to you like news headlines with no sign of hope or help or anything inspiring. So and to kind of relate to that, uh NBC News has this thing called Inspiring America where after they tell you the news headlines whether it be good or bad, they'll have a short little just something to lighten up your day, uh, kind of, you know, obviously, like, inspire you. I don't think Mark does this here, and honestly, maybe that might have been his purpose, to make an album that kind of showed the world how everything really is, or, you know, what really has been going on in the United States and stuff like that, but I just honestly didn't enjoy this album all that much. It kind of seemed to be a more cheaply fleshed out version of This Is My Dinner, minus the anecdotes and charm. But, I don't know, I just, maybe I'll get around to liking it at some point, but it it just didn't really do a whole lot for me, unfortunately. Mm. Mm. So I also, I also put this album um, in my last spot, um, and that's because I think that both the compositions, like instrumentally wise, and also his stories are probably the least interesting that they've been in this sort of uh, period of his career. Um, and I sort of have the same criticism that we heard for Common as Light with the filler. Um, and I personally would prefer uh, like five or six tracks of filler um, and then other good tracks surrounding them. But when you have like three songs that are filler and those songs themselves take up like nearly an hour, that's a really big problem for me. Um, so it really makes it a very taxing listen. Um, that's kind of just how I feel about it. I don't have too much to say about it because I've only heard it once. Um but I'd say my track picks are um, Couch Potato, I'm Not Laughing at You, and my least favorite track is probably Cows. And we'll go on to mixed tracks then. Okay, uh, oh, no, my I favorite do, I went tracks first. from... I, I went first. <laughs> my brain is fried. I, I, I have to apologize to everyone. I am quite sick today, I'm, but I'm I'm soldiering on through. Uh, my favorite tracks on Common as Light and Love are God Bless Ohio, Chili Lemon Peanuts, Stranger Than Paradise, Early June Blues, Bergen to Trondheim, Isle of Portugal, and Bastille Day. My least favorite tracks are Philadelphia Cough, uh, Cop, uh, Sarah Lawrence College Song, Butch Lullaby, Vague Rock Song, 70s TV Theme Song. My favorite track was probably Cows, and my least favorite tracks were Bay of Kotor, which has absolutely no reason to be 23 minutes long, <laughs> and probably Day, of, uh, Day in America. My favorite tracks from This Is My Dinner are This Is Not Possible and uh, the title track. My least favorite track is Candles. All right, number eight. Um, Moving on to our number eight picks. Let's go. I'll, I'll go uh, first now since it's uh, not as um, controversial. <laughs> my number eight pick is Among <laughs> the Leaves. My number eight pick is Universal Themes. Mine is April. And mine is This Is My Dinner. Oh. Um, hmm. There's a lot of uh, variety here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. Um, among the Leaves, to me, it, aesthetically and in its presentation, it feels kind of like a step towards what we would have gotten on Benji um, a few years after this. But it just lacks the quality that that album does in pretty much every aspect in my eyes. Um, guitar lines are uninspired, uninteresting, sometimes just tread on monotony. Songwriting, well, you know, mostly quite good. Sometimes feels like it's a bit directionless and tedious. Uh, and the whole album, to me, just feels like it's a bit bloated. And while, you know, a long album is given when, when you're listening to Sun Kill Moon, I think this one does very little to justify that length, I think. You know, it gets boring really fast to me, and even though it does have uh, some highlights, everything else in between is just really forgettable, kind of bland and sedated almost, and just hard to remember. Okay, um, I chose Universal Themes, and uh, I don't really have much to say about this album, as I don't really care for it all that much. There are a couple of good tracks on here that I do genuinely enjoy, but 
I feel like what holds it back from me are the songs being a slight bit too long and some of the instrumentation not being that interesting and the heavier sounding songs on here just make this album feel a bit messy to me and that all just kind of culminates to make a pretty inconsistent and not as enjoyable experience as I would want it to be. And we get what we expect from Mark, we get some uh, solid writing and some somewhat decent production. But unlike some of the other albums that I put above it, Universal Themes just fails to do anything for me outside of being just another pretty long album from Mark under the Sun Kill Moon name. So I don't really find it all that great, but I'm sure it's good to some people, just not not for me. So I got April. Um, I didn't really get this one. I definitely enjoyed it more than uh, the previous album, but it just kind of seemed like your average run-of-the-mill folk album, which isn't really that terrible, but it just kind of felt like the instrumentation felt bland and kind of felt like Mark was holding back from something. And although there were some very decent tracks on the, on the album, especially Hair on Blue, which is probably one of my all-time favorite Sun Kill Moon songs, uh, I just didn't really think there was anything more than... I just didn't think it was anything more than mediocre, to mm. be completely honest. But one thing is for sure, I'm definitely going to be trying to return to this because I've heard it's considered to be one of his best in terms of like older albums. So I just kind of wish I felt the same thing, the same way about it as other people did, I suppose. Understandable. And um, my number eight spot was This Is My Dinner. Um, and for this one, I felt it was similar to the most recent one. This is one that I've heard, I think, like one and a half times. Um, I think it's an improvement over I Also Want to Die in New Orleans because it has more humor in, in terms of how the songs are uh, constructed. Um, an example of that is uh, Linda Blair when he starts <laughs> mimicking the coughing of the, of the girl in the airport. Um, that was absolutely hysterical. Um, <laughs> I also like the narrative of this album, which I feel in this case is an American sort of exploring another culture, which I think is really interesting, at least to me personally, because I've never been to the countries that he's singing about. So in that sense, it's kind of more interesting to listen to what he's singing about in that case. Um, and then there's also some other moments of hilarity that I dig, um, like on Rock and Roll Singer, um, when he'll like hold out a note for like 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> I think that's, that's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think there's a lot more humor in it, but also length is a problem again. Um, and if there's a song that has an instrumental that you don't like, you're going to have to sit through it for like 10 minutes or so. So that's another problem that's, um, I think, is shared between the two albums that I've talked about so far. So it's not horrible, but um, definitely not a favorite of mine. Hmm. Understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'll go with my favorite tracks on Among the Leaves. Um, I know it's path pathetic, but that was the greatest night of my life. Among the Leaves and Lowly Mountain, and my least favorite track was Red Poison. My favorite tracks from Universal Themes were Bird of Flims, The Possum, and Little Rascals. My least favorite track was With a Sort of Grace, I Walk to the Bedroom and Cry. <clears throat> to Cry, I mean. So. <laughs> uh, my favorite track was Heron Blue, off of April, and my least favorite was Tonight in Bilbao. Um, my favorite song on This Is My Dinner um, was Rock and Roll Singer, um, and my least favorite was probably Candles. All right, number Sweet. seven. Is it? Yeah, seven. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. My number seven pick is uh, Admiral Fell Promises. My number seven pick is Among the Leaves. Mm -hmm. My number seven pick is Common as Light and Love are Red Valleys of Blood. And my, Ooh, my that's spicy. My number seven spot was also <laughs> well, I mean, among the leaves. Oh, for maybe the first not time as spicy this... as uh, nostalgia's placement. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's a pretty hot take. Yeah, fuck Indeed. Fantano. Oh, my homies hate Fantano. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Giving the new Mike album a forehead ass. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh yeah. Um, that that one hurt. Didn't two it people did. take among the leaves? Me. Yeah. And me. Um, yeah, you just go back to back first then. Just since you're talking about the same album. Okay. 
All right, so when it comes to Among the Leaves, I think that the songwriting and instrumentation is just as good as I want it to be on a Sun Kill Moon album, but it's pretty bloated in my opinion, and I feel like a lot of the songwriting isn't as impactful or as engaging as uh, his other projects that I put above this one. You know, the first three tracks are incredible in my opinion, and a couple of others in the track list stand out as well. But as a whole, it just kind of blends together and it can get a bit monotonous to listen to and it can drag on a fair bit. And I feel like I'd say if like all the like the, all the fat was trimmed off of this album, then I'd enjoy it a lot more. But other than that, I don't really have much else to say about it. Yeah, I feel the same way. Um, the reason I don't have much to say is I won't, I've only heard it once. Um, and I don't really see this one as much more than a warm up. Uh, for Benji, I think mm. um, it definitely definitely could have been trimmed a little bit. Um, nothing disgusting about like the songs and how they sound, um, but I guess yeah, just being too long and not as gripping as I'd want it to be are the main issues I have with it. Um, yeah, uh, Admiral felt promising. Right, this feels kind of like a, a more simple and bare bones direction for Sun Kill Moon after the previous uh, records. And while, you know, it still has everything you would expect from a, a Mark Kozlik project, um, you know, intimate instrumentation, very good lyricism, and a very subdued kind of um, eerie almost uh, kind of energy and atmosphere, it just feels a lot less significant than some of the albums that would come both before and after it. Uh, it feels a lot, like, less interesting in terms of, you know, the storytelling and songwriting the instrumentation and just the overall energy and feel of it but that being said it's it's still a good album and i think there's still a lot to appreciate here i just do think he has better albums all right so common is light uh two things i got from this album mark loves trans people <laughs> and hates donald trump hey uh, that's good <laughs> yeah um uh, so I felt like this was a pretty decent release from him, uh, but nothing super notable. Uh, I do agree with nostalgia. Two hours and two hours and I think nine minutes yeah, does feel very long for even for a Sun Kill Moon album. Um, but even with that said, there are some pretty great songs on here, and but most of the time they are buried in between kind of mid tier songs and half baked rambles. Uh, does make me feel bad because I have a lot of friends who love this album very much, but unfortunately it doesn't do as much for me. Uh, I am looking to his free concert for trans people. That should be fun now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's that's about it. That's all I really have to say about it. Sweet. That's fair. Um, sure, I, I'll, I'll go first with my um, best and worst tracks. My favorite tracks on Admiral Fell Promises were Ellisund, uh, Half Moon Bay, Church of the Pines, Third, and I don't know how to pronounce that, Seneca, Seneca, uh, Worst Tracks, You Are My Son. Uh, my favorite tracks from Among the Leaves are I Know It's Pathetic, but That Was the Greatest Night of My Life, Sunshine in Chicago, The Moderately Talented Yet Attractive Young Woman versus The Exceptionally Talented Yet Not So Attractive Middle Aged Man, mm. Not Much Rhymes with Everything's Awesome at All Times. Lonely Mountain and Black Kite. My least favorite tracks are both the UK blues. Oh, really? Yeah, I wasn't mm. really a fan of those tracks. I just got bored listening to them. And I, I, guess, uh, I guess I'll go next because I, yeah. I had the same album in that All spot. Right. Um, I had the same favorite track picks, um, <laughs> except I swapped out um, the one with the very long title that you just said with um, <laughs> the, the title track. Which for I think convenience. Is, for convenience sake <laughs> for convenience sake of course um but also the title track um i thought was the best sounding song on there um least favorite tracks are the last three and um that bird is a broken wing i um, mean that last one i thought had really kind of disgusting lyrics so it really turned me off from it but um yeah those are my thoughts all right my favorite tracks were probably butch lullaby philadelphia cop and bergen de trondheim and my least favorite tracks were Vague Rock Song and Bastille Day. Sweet. Our uh, number six picks, number six, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, my number six pick is I Also Want to Die in New Orleans. 
My number six pick is also I also want to die in New Orleans. <laughs> Both want to die in New Orleans. Hey. <laughs> Hell yeah. uh, my number six pick is Among the Leaves. Uh, my number six pick is uh, Universal Themes. Um, since me and Mick have the same album, uh, we'll go here, in this. Here, can I go first? Order. Yeah, go first. Okay, so I got around to listening to this album today, and personally, I enjoy it quite a lot. This album sees uh, Mark opt for a more jazz kind of influence sound in terms of instrumentation, and a lot more of a political focus lyrically on some of these songs. And, you know, he's very critical on a lot of these political tracks, and I agree with a lot of his politics. And honestly, despite its uh, length, I think it goes by relatively fast. The lyricism is still interesting to listen to, in my opinion. And uh, I love a lot of the things that Mark has to say, obviously. You know, production-wise, I think it sounds fantastic. I think Mark's jab at a jazz kind of approach pays off very well, in my opinion. Some tracks drag on a fair bit, though, but other than that, I think it's a great project, and I do enjoy it a fair bit. Um, I, I, Yeah, I, I do like this album, but I honestly can't tell if it's just very ambitious or if it's just really carelessly assembled, but a lot of the instrumentals on this are just really off the wall and wacky and quite messy and uh, raw, and I love most of them. Um, you know, it's it's far from, like his best album and the more longer and drawn out tracks definitely kind of hinder its replay value but vocally songwriting wise i think it's what you'd expect from our cosmic again um very as, as mick said a very politically charged album um which i can appreciate definitely um you know it's vocally it's what you'd expect from our cause like so it's pretty much for me the instrumentation that makes or breaks a lot of these tracks and more often no you know i do enjoy the instrumentation and it makes for an interesting con contrast between you know mark's really kind of monotone anecdotes and then this messy and wild instrumentation in the back it just it's an interesting contrast there are some tracks where it doesn't work as well and it kind of borders on incoherency but most of most of the time it's not the case and most of the time i can definitely appreciate and enjoy this album even if it's a bit odd and a bit drawn out at times all right so i got among the leaves uh i felt like this is a pretty good hit in the cosmic catalog uh the beauty is mostly found in the simplicity with like the, the acoustic guitar and vocals complementing each other pretty well in my opinion, just like a lot of other Sun Kill Moon albums, as well as the occasional other uh, additional instruments like the xylophone on, or at least I think it's a xylophone on uh, the moderately talented yet attractive young woman. Uh, I can agree with it sort of being a precursor to Benji and that uh, his songwriting style sort of begins to change around this album. Uh, definitely a lot more different than Admiral Felt Promises, which is his previous album before this. Uh, becoming a little more freeform uh, uh, than his first, I think, three albums. So, yeah. Um, so my, my pick for this spot was Universal Themes. Um, so when this album first came out, um, I sort of went into panic mode because um, I was worried that he had done Benji and then it was sort of like a lightning in a bottle um, type deal where he was never going to be able to recreate the magic of that album um, with future releases um, and he definitely didn't do it with this one um, as far as the songs go I either love them or I hate them um, which I, I think makes it a very lopsided album um, and yeah like the ones I mentioned before um, stories aren't as gripping as I'd like them to be um, that's pretty much just how I feel. I think the instrumentation is kind of boring at, at um, some points. Um, it's not horrible. Could have been shorter, lost a track or two. Uh, but I don't have much to say about it, unfortunately. Okay. Um, well, well, should I start with Best and Worst Tracks, or do you want to go, Mick? Uh, I'll go first, yeah. All right. All right, my favorite tracks from I Also Want to Die in New Orleans was Cows. Bay of Kotor and Couch Potato. My least favorite track was I'm Not Laughing at You. Uh, my favorite tracks were Day in America, Coyote, and Couch Potatoes. My least favorite tracks were L48 and Cows. 
Uh, my favorite tracks off Among the Leaves were I Know It's Pathetic, uh, The Moderately Talented Yet Attractive Young Woman, and Kingfish. And my least favorite track would probably be The Winery. Um, my favorite tracks um, from Universal Themes are Birds of Flims, um, and This Is My First Day, and I'm Indian, and I work at a gas station. Um, would have been funnier if it was a guy who worked at Panera Bread. Um, but we, we, <laughs> yeah. we, can't, we can't, get, can't get everything we want in life. Um, yeah. I did I did actually forget to mention um, Little Rascals, um, which I don't think is a great song, but um, the line about his mom coming to kick his ass in Scrabble um, was, ama- was amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and <laughs> my least favorite track was Ollie Sphinx 2 um, because I thought as soon as it started, I wanted it to be over. Um, and yeah, those are my picks. All right. All right, halfway mark. We are at the halfway mark. mark. Top, top five. Uh, my number five pick is April. My number five pick is also April. Who's the uh, Mine is Admiral Fell Promises. And my number five pick was Common and Light and Love, Our Red Valleys of Blood. All right, me and make a green again, so do you want to go first or should I go first? <laughs> Mickey T. Sorry, my brother came into my room. What were you saying? Uh, kill him. Uh, do you want to go first or should <laughs> I go first since we have the same? No, he'd kill me. Uh, I'll go first. <laughs> um, yeah, I chose April for my number five pick. And um, we are delivering some great folk material that we normally expect on a Sun Kill Moon album. But we get a, we do get a great batch of acoustic numbers and a fair few great songwriting moments. The issues I have though are that it does get very monotonous, especially with some of the longer, with some of the longer durations. I'm also not a fan of the electric guitar tracks on here; they just don't do a lot for me. The it's kind of in a similar vein to Among the Leaves for me, where the first three tracks I think are incredible, but then it just began to take a nosedive for me, and the monotony and lack of inspiration just hit me. Like I would have preferred if it, if it was a, uh, I would have preferred it if it sounded a bit more inspired and a bit more effort was put in but honestly i just don't really enjoy a lot of tracks on here but then again i do enjoy a lot of the aspect aspects out of the production that this album has to offer and songwriting so yeah i that's all i really have to say um yeah april is an album that i just can't really help but compare to its uh predecessor ghosts of the great highway just because kind of sonically and aesthetically they just sound really similar to me except this one it just sounds like a more low-key and less significant um goes to the great highway there's still a lot of great things about this album the instrumentation is very melancholy and you know very pretty songwriting as, as you would expect is quite interesting and overall very good but there are just a few tracks on here that i do not really care for um they kind of ruin sort of the flow of the album for me and just bring it down a bit and when i i am comparing it to some of the albums that i have put above it it's just hard to justify putting this any higher than fifth albeit it is a good album i will give it that all right so i got admiral felt promises for number five uh, Mark does classical guitar, and it's actually pretty damn good. Uh, I really enjoyed this album, due to it sounding like nothing else he's ever really put out, and the fact that I believe he hasn't really done a whole lot of other stuff with classical guitar. Uh, it's a very relaxing album to listen to, and songs like Alice in Half Moon Bay and others are wonderful additions to his canon. Uh, other interesting note, this is my dad's favorite Sun Kill Moon album, and the first one that he recommended me since he's a huge fan of classical guitar stuff. Uh, hopefully with repeated listens, I'll be able to appreciate the album even more throughout the coming years. But uh, yeah, shout out to Pop. Yeah, shout out to Maureen's dad. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, so my number... <laughs> <laughs> um, so my number five pick um, was Common, and Light... Common as Light and Love. Um, so it took me a very long time to get to the level of enjoyment of this album that I have now. Um, from when I first heard it. Um, and I think that is really the case for everyone who listens to this thing. I don't think it's really possible to love this album on a first listen. Um, hi, uh, reasons I like it are sort of the meta-ness of the lyrics, um, the variation in terms of instrumentation and how the songs go, 
Um, I mean, this is the only album he has that sounds like hip hop at points. Um, so that's worthy of praise, I think. Um, it is it is too long, um, and within songs, I sort of get bored at, at some points, um, like the '70s TV show theme, um, where it's really vibrant in the first half and then sort of dies down a bit, and he starts telling a story. That happens a couple of times, um, so that means that on some tracks I'll get to the halfway point and I want to skip to the end. Um, but there are some tracks that keep my attention the entire time. Um, and those are the track picks that I have. Um, so when it's engaging, it's great. And when, and when the stories are boring, it's boring, which is the case for him a lot, I think. Mm. Uh, Mick, best and worst tracks? Okay, my favorite tracks from April are Lost Verses, Lucky Man, and Blue Orchids. My least favorite track is Hair and Blue. Uh, my favorite tracks are Lost Verses, The Light, Lucky Town, Morristown, Tonight in Bilbao, and my least favorite track is also Hair and Blue. Uh, my favorite tracks were Allison, Half Moon Bay, and Australian Winter, and my least favorite track, probably Sam Wong Hotel. Uh, so my favorite tracks from Common as Light and Love are um, the opener, God Bless Ohio, uh, I think that's one of his best songs post Benji. Mm. Um, I love Portugal. I'm um, just for that very raw. Like I love this country feeling is very nice. Um, and then the two songs that reference um, Eliza Lamb, um, which is a story I've been obsessed with since I first heard about it. Mm. All right. Top four. We made it. We ready. <laughs> All right. Let's um, do this. My number four pick <laughs> is This Is My Dinner. Ooh. Mm-hmm. My number four pick is Admirable f- Ad- Admirable Admirable <laughs> Fell Promises. I can't speak today all of a sudden. Mine is Universal Themes. Um. Hoot hoot. <laughs> Um, we could we could just continue in with our talk with our reviews and then we would come <laughs> yeah, back. He can announce. Uh, he can um, announce when he comes back. I'll, I'll, I'll go first. With... Okay. Oh, all right. You go first. Yeah. All right. So I chose Admir- admirable. Ad- I can't fucking say the name of this album. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Admiral <laughs> fell promises. I think this album is pretty great. Honestly, the sound is primarily. Primary, pri- I can't speak. <laughs> fuck's sake! <laughs> uh, the sound is primarily classic acoustic focused, and the instrumentals on this album are just f- absolutely fantastic. They are absolutely gorgeous. The show off moments are amazing as well, and it actually shows us that there's quite a bit of te- technical proficiency that goes into this, um, into the instrumentation. I can honestly appreciate that aspect. Plus, it doesn't really sound much like any other Sun Kill Moon album, in my opinion. The vocals are just as uh, charismatic as I'd want him to be. He's a bit mumbly at times, uh, but I don't really mind it all that much. Well, not as mumbly as, say, on um, the the Ghosts of the Great Highway, but he's pretty much improved vocally on this album, in my opinion. And um, there's plenty of brilliant moments of songwriting. The first two tracks are easily some of my favorite Sun Kill Moon songs, period. I think it's pretty consistent. There's maybe one or two duds on here, and there are more. And there are more so for the longer tracks. But honestly, I really fuck with this album a lot. I think this is a great album, and yeah, that's all I really have to say. Um, yeah, uh, I think that this is my dinner is pretty damn underrated. You know, sure, the amount of detail that Mark sometimes goes into. About some pretty insignificant topics is a a bit goofy and a bit silly, you know, but whether he's talking about boxing or about checking into a hotel, just the way he presents it and his like almost tongue in cheek attitude on this album is just really interesting to me for whatever reason. I'm just so engaged in anything he's talking about, no matter what it is. Um, The instrumental work here is just really great, I think. Um, You know, sometimes it's really bright and fun and then like on tracks like come on and get happy but then there's tracks that are more energetic and have this kind of 90s nostalgic feeling like rock and roll singer 
but then there's also these really pretty melancholy and emotional tune turn uh, tune down tracks like uh candles and overall it's just such a complete album i think his storytelling is brilliant on this i think i can probably think of one track that i don't care too much for and even then i don't think it's bad uh but overall it's just it's hard to explain but i just think this is a very charming and likable album and mark's storytelling is is pretty great All right, so I got Universal Themes for number four. Uh, first off, guys, Mark's in Switzerland. <laughs> Second off, uh, <laughs> this is a very good album from them, actually. I didn't think it reached the highs that uh, the albums in my top three did, but it, I think it still had pretty exemplary uh, instrumentals and lyrics. But uh, if Benji was his in-between album that kind of rode the fence between his old school and new school material, and this was his first new release, quote unquote, uh, in terms of like his contemporary folk sing talking delivery of vocals that have been shown on his later releases, uh, his trademark humor is still shown on songs such as Cry Me a River, Williamsburg Sleeve, Tattoo Blues. And I think his songwriting was still strong from the afterglow of Benji. Not much else I can really say about this album. It's just sort of Mark doing what he does best. Hmm. Um, Mick, is Mick here? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, are we, what are we? What are we doing with? Um, I suppose we could continue on and wait for him to do his reviews for the, with the for right. the next album he misses. We can... Uh, or we can just cut cut it off here. I have the timestamp, so we can just My mic don't don't, don't stop recording. Oh. oh, he's here. He's here. Wait, never mind. Never mind. Did my hey! mic die? Did my mic die on me? And I didn't notice. Yeah, <laughs> I think it did. Sometime. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well, you're back now. What's what's your number four pick? Uh, <laughs> Admiral Felt Promises. Um, so this is um his Man and His Guitar album. Um. Which is, I think it's very nice. It's a very good album. Um, I like the flamenco um, style of playing that's all over this thing. Um, it can be a little bit one note for me, um, but I don't really think that's too much of a problem. It's just a personal gripe I have with it. I don't dislike this album at all. Um, I like it quite a bit actually, um, but it's just sort of, it's just sort of there, but not in the sense that I don't care about it. It's just I like it, but it's it's there. If that makes any sense. Mm. Uh, but it's very pretty, yeah. Uh, all right, best and worst tracks. We'll start with Mick. Okay, my favorite tracks from Admirable Felt. <laughs> I can't fucking speak. <laughs> um, my favorite tracks from Admiral Fell Promises are Elucent. Is that how you say that? <laughs> oh, no. Half Moon Bay, the title track. And my least favorite track is third and Sinessa. I think that's how you say that. Gotta um, love a podcast with two illiterate hosts. <laughs> I I have the same album, so I'll give mine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so my okay. top picks are the op- are the opener Alsend, um, Half Moon Bay, um, Third and Seneca, um, You Are My Son, and my least favorite is probably Australian Winter. My favorite tracks on This Is My Dinner are This Is Not Possible, This Is My Dinner, Linda Blair. Copenhagen hand candles come on get happy my least favorite track which I still think is okay is David Cassidy uh, my favorite tracks off universal themes will probably be uh, birds of flims Crimea Will- river Williamsburg sleeve tattoo blues the possum and garden of lavender and my least favorite track would probably be little rascals all right Sweet. we're in the top three, three now podium we made it all right um Um, my number three pick is universal themes my number three pick is common as light and lover red valleys of blood my number three pick would be ghosts of the great highway and my number three pick is april all Um, right am i starting or you start mick we're just swapping Uh, around well, uh, how about I just go first for the rest of it? All right, go, yeah. Because anyone could barge into my fucking room any minute now. Um, <laughs> okay, so 
so Common as Light is my third pick, and this album is very long, as uh, you may have noticed. And um, I remember basically you saying when we were talking about um, when you were talking about Volume Two for Selected Ambient Works when our Apex Twin mm-hmm. podcast, which you should go watch by the way if you're listening. <laughs> and um, yeah. I feel like this album is rewarding for the two hour journey that it brings you on as. I think this album has some great instrumentation across the board. There were moments where it felt a bit disorienting with the way they sounded, but I but I did enjoy quite a lot of it. Maybe the stuff that disoriented me a bit was the kind of monotone tracks, but other than that, I think the rest was brilliant. I think Mark was great throughout the project. The songwriting is on point, as to be expected. He has some great descriptive, captivating, and unique moments of songwriting that's very personal. And like I said, the album can ask a lot for the listener, especially for how long this album is. But there's a reward at the end of it, and I think it pays off for me. Hence why it's in my top three. Alright. Another underrated album, in my opinion. I think Universal Themes, to me, feels like a bit of an oddball record in Sun Kill Moon discography. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I mean that as a compliment. Lyrically, I think it's very strong. It's not quite as hard hitting as some of the other albums, especially the album that came before it, Benji. Uh, but you know, I think I still think that uh, Mark keeps his vocal ramblings pretty engaging throughout. And in my eyes, the like somewhat off kilter, and you know, at times very powerful, at other times very atmospheric instrumentation is what just boosts the quality of this album and enjoyment I get from this album that much higher. The instrumentals on, you know, and performances on tracks like With a Sword of Grace and Ali Spunks 2 are just very driving, powerful. Um, You know, they have this kind of exhilarating emotion and it creates a very nice contract with tra- contrast with tracks like uh, Little Rascal and Garden of Lavender, which are a lot more subdued, more melancholy, beautiful and atmospheric, even ethereal to an extent. And I think the journey this album takes you on is just enjoyable from start to finish. Uh, You know, it never gets old or monotonous to me, and I really think it deserves a lot more love than it gets. All right, so I got Ghost of the Great Highway for number three. Uh, One of the greatest debuts of all time, one of the greatest albums of all time, and we're still only on number three. Uh, goes to the Great Highway, but the, puts the rock in folk rock just because of how kind of heavy some of the songs on the album are. Like Salvador Sanchez, for example, sounds like it could be like a noise rock inspired Neil Young song. Maybe something from Weld, or maybe uh, maybe like something from the B side, "The Rust Never Sleeps." Almost. While Lillian Parrots is just a great rock and roll track in general. Uh, songs such as Glenn Tipton, Gentle Moon, and Duck Who Kim add atmosphere and help with the folkier side of the album. Uh, the instrumental C. Paloma is a friggin' gorgeous work of solo guitar and other stringed instruments, and the closer, Pancho Villa, does a perfect job of closing the album. And then there's Carry Me Ohio, which might uh, be my yeah, favorite so... song. Hmm? Sorry. <laughs> no, it's... Oh, you're good. Go ahead. You're Go ahead. good. Uh, yeah, Carry Me Ohio might be my favorite song Kozilek's like, ever made. Um, and while I'm at it, I might as well shout out, uh, it's not on the original album, but the two versions of Somewhere and uh, the acoustic of Carry Me Ohio, uh, just as worthy of praise as the rest of the songs on the album. Uh, overall, just a fantastic debut from a really enigmatic and prolific artist. Okay, um, so April. So... This one, I love this album, um, but I will admit that, as Maureen said, it's not exactly a boundary-pushing album, um, but for what it is, I think it's wonderful. Um, I like a lot of the instrumentation, especially the uses of strings, um, which I think really add a lot to the, um, to the sound and of some, a lot of these songs. Um, it does feel a little bit derivative um, in the second half, I would say, um, with tracks like Like the River, um, and especially Night the Sky, which is a song that I like, but it, it does feel like it rips off Neil Young a little bit too much, too directly. Um, not really that much of a complaint um, as far as that goes. But overall, um, I love this album a lot. Um, my favorite moment is definitely Lost Verses, um, especially that like last two and a half minutes where the electric guitar kicks in. Um, that's 
incredible. Um, but yeah, I love this one. All right, Mick. All right, best of tracks. All right, um, my favorite tracks from disc one of uh, Commoners Light is <laughs> God Bless Ohio, Chili Lemon Peanuts, Philadelphia Cop, and Lone Star. Uh, my favorites from disc two are Early June Blues, Bergen to Trottenheim, and uh, I Love Portugal and 70s TV show theme song. My least favorite tracks are Sarah Lawrence College Song and Butch Lullaby. Uh, my favorite tracks on Universal Themes are The Possum, uh, Birds of Films, Ali Sphinx 2, With a Sword of Grace, I Walk to the Bathroom to Cry, Little Rascals, and Garden of Lavender. My least favorite track was Crimea River, Williamsburg, Steve Tattoo Blues. Alright, um, my Marty. favorite tracks on, oh, uh, my favorite tracks, <laughs> honestly, probably all of them, except for maybe Last Tide, which I feel like could have been tied into floating. Yeah, yeah, go. Um, so my favorite tracks on April, um, are the first six. Uh, they're all amazing. Um, and tonight in Bilbao, one thing I did forget, forget to mention, um, is Heron Blue was released as a single and, um, it was released as a single for the Gears of War three game. So that, so the <laughs> single art, the single art is literally just the cover of April with like the logo for like the game. And it's hilarious because we know that this guy doesn't play a single, has never played a video game in his life. <laughs> but it's just that just clearly I die laughing every time I look at it. Oh my God. I need to and, uh, that. least favorite is what was, it? um, like the river is my least favorite. All right, all right. Number two. Right, number uh, two picks. My Woo. number two pick was Benji. My number two pick was Ghosts of the Great Highway. Fuck it, number two pick. This is my dinner. <laughs> hey. Hey. Sorry, I, I clicked out of the, the channel for a second. <laughs> uh, my my second pick is Ghost of the Great Highway. All right, maybe mm, two people pick ghosts, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I picked it. All right, yeah, you, you go first. Okay, so Ghost of the Great Highway, a phenomenal debut album from Sun Kill Moon, and I think it's quite the introduction to his discography. The instrumentals on here just ooze emotion, pure passion, ranging from like really nice acoustic numbers to, you know, electric numbers, and some moments of, you know, distortion and noise influence, and I think these all culminate very well together to create a really nice experience. At times I don't understand what Mark is saying because um, he's kind of mumbly sometimes, but you do get, but when you do understand him, a lot of the a lot of it lands home and it just cuts deep because of the detail and the lyricism and, you know, the whole uh, melancholic and sad vibe of the whole record. And um, that's what I enjoy about it the most. It's raw emotion and it's uh, and it's potent lyricism. Vocals sound very sweet, very soothing across the board for me. But there are times, you know, where obviously he's just kind of muttering his way over these tracks. But honestly, I think it's saved by how, you know, how gorgeous it all sounds as a whole. And... All in all, I think it is well deserving of being, like, quoted as one of his best albums. So yeah, that's just my take on Ghost of the Great Highway. Yeah. Um. So I also love this album, and I think it's a masterpiece. Um. And it definitely wasn't the logic. It didn't feel like the logical next step from the last Red House Painters um, album. It's definitely a huge jump from there. Um, lyrics, production. Um. Actually, I think all of the albums that he's been on. And Sunk Moon and Red House Painters were produced by himself. Um, so he's really versatile as a producer. I just wanted to, to throw that mm -hmm. out there. Um, compositions are beautiful. Um, I don't really see any any flaws with this um, at all. Um, and I do like the way that um, third track, Salvador Sanchez and Pacho Villa are connected by their lyrics. They just have different sounds, which I think is pretty cool that he did that. Um, and then... Uh, the best 15 minute track that he's written is on here too. Um, so yeah, flawless. All right. My number two pick was Benji where albums like among the leaves and common as light and love feel a bit too bloated and meandering and monotonous at times in their delivery, their storytelling, uh, the songwriting performances, everything. I think Benji excels at all those things. 
and you know Mark's songwriting, while still very much conversation and conversational, and based off of mostly anecdotes, you know, while still keeping in every detail, it's it's just at his most engaging, his most personal, his most vulnerable, and just his most significant that it's ever been on Benji. Uh, instrumentally, I think just his acoustic guitar patterns and the atmospheres they create. They're just so full of emotion. They're never uninteresting, like, you know, a lot of tracks that I found uninteresting on Among the Leaves. Just always keep me engaged, always keep the track flowing, and always just add beauty to the track. And, you know, even though there are examples on albums I previously talked about where I think uh, Mark's songwriting isn't as engaging as I would have liked it to be, I still find, you know, his songwriting style and kind of his kind of conversational songwriting style to be very charming very engaging and very sincere when done right and benji is not only done right it's done to perfection and it's a, an amazing album and it's definitely one of my favorite albums of the last decade all right so i got this is my dinner uh so when Mark's not singing about getting his dick jerked off, this is um, an immensely <laughs> enjoyable album. Like, very, very immensely enjoyable album for me. Despite its hour and a half runtime, uh, to me this album kind of feels like a travelogue by Mark with him kind of sing talking songs uh, specifically written for tours uh, in Europe and stuff, dealing with like the mundane happenings of his life on the road. You know, uh, I think somebody had mentioned, you know, him... You know, he sings about him checking into hotels and, uh, you know, ordering the... <laughs> he's, the he's the guy who likes to tag the telly and stuff like that. Uh, but it uh, it's very charming, like, the way he delivers it and stuff like that. And I think, mo yeah, most of, of the songs take place in Scandinavia with, you know, Oslo. Uh, I mean, one of the songs is called Copenhagen. So, obviously, Copenhagen, mm -hmm. uh, Stockholm... But they also take place outside of Frankfurt, and if I recall correctly, I think So for Joyful Hands takes place uh, in either Spain or Portugal or something like that. And uh, mm -hmm. the lyrics are held up by some of my all-time favorite Sun Kill Moon instrumentations. Like, they're very mellow, almost kind of jazzy or psychedelic at times, especially on songs like Linda Blair. Um, at times, the folk rock instrumentals that I feel... Uh, they complement his stream of consciousness style of lyricism very well. And uh, one of the most affecting moments on the album for me is on the title track when he meets the woman who hands him the Snickers bar and says, I'm so fucking broke, this is my dinner. And that really resonated with me for whatever reason. Kind of made me appreciative of how lucky I have it, but you know, <laughs> enough about that. This album's fantastic. Uh, kind of sad that it's his lowest rated Sun Kill Moon project on the site uh so i just hope one day that it'll get the appreciate the appreciation and love it deserves there's always hope well, second lowest on rate your music so you know mm -hmm. it's the second lowest on rate your music uh there's what? some hope <laughs> <laughs> what is what actually is his lowest on rate your music uh you know you are... yeah oh, okay all right uh, let's we'll start with the the same order we did it in for best and worst tracks. Wait, didn't Conor give his review? Or yeah, he did right after you. Okay, yeah. Um, that's your drink. All right, my favorite tracks from Ghosts of the Great Highway are Glenn Tipton, Carmi Ohio, Last Tides, Duck Koo Kim, and Pancho Villa. My least favorite track is Floating. Um, so my favorite tracks are pretty much all of them, um, but <laughs> sp special shout out to Glenn Tipton for telling the story about a serial killer that I, nobody has ever told before. Um, Carry Me Ohio is an incredibly mostly potent song about, about the passing of a loved one. Um, and Daku Kim, I, I don't even know what to say at this point. Like this is probably the best song of 2003, maybe the best song of the decade container for best song of all time like it blows me away every single time i hear it um and <laughs> yeah i could talk for an hour about it but i won't um <laughs> least favorite none uh, but if i had to pick one probably literally literally in parrots but it's still amazing uh my favorite tracks on benji were carissa 
I can't live without my mother's love. Richard Ramirez died today of natural causes. Pray for Newtown, Micheline, and Ben's my friend. I I don't have a least favorite track. <laughs> Fair. I don't have the heart to put any track on that spot. Alright. <laughs> um my favorite tracks would probably be all of them except for Soap for Joyful Hands. Right. We are here. We already know. We already know at this stage. My number one pick is Benji. Shocking, um, I know. My number one pick is Ghost of the Great Highway. My number one pick is also Benji. <laughs> my number one pick is <laughs> the Ace of the Moon. Just kidding. It's Benji. <laughs> here, I'll, I'll, I'll go yeah. first and then let the, the Benji hype train. <laughs> leave the station um, yeah because this whole section highway. has just been so diverse yeah. so far you see <laughs> we all have a different pick here <laughs> well for me it, it's not Benji as much as I love Benji there was only one album I could have picked in top spot I don't think there was ever really a internal battle, battle in my mind as to what I was going to put first and that is Ghost of the Great Highway which is one of my favorite albums of all time and after listening to it like five times this week, I I might be bumping it up to a 10. Um, it's just one of the most beautiful, haunting, serene, and emotional albums that I've ever heard. And, you know, as much as I adore Benji, there is no way I could put any, like, this album anywhere but the top spot. In my eyes, it's just a, a compilation of the most beautiful, like, and perfect songs Mark Koslick has ever made instrumentally it's a lot more busy and full than his more recent stuff yet the the somber and personal atmosphere still remains intact uh lyrically it is still very much what you would expect from mark koslick but it's a lot more concise and poetic than some of his later works and it's just i think the most poignant album in his discography when it comes to songwriting there isn't a track on here that i dislike i just love every single one and it also has three of my favorite Sun Kill Moon tracks on one album. Lost Mickey. Rip. <laughs> well, we'll we'll start with you then. Me? Okay. Yeah. Um. So Benji, I don't think it's as good of an album as Ghost of the Great Highway, but I'm putting it at my number one spot because I would have never discovered Mark Kozlik without it. Um. And I think that is an enough to make it my favorite album that he's made. Um, but it also just happens to be incredible at the same time. Um, it was lyrically wise, unlike anything I've ever heard before in my life. And I don't think anything ever is going to come close to it. Um, the rawness of it is unmatched. Um, and I don't know, music's been around for what, dude, like millions of years now. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it just floors me every single time. Um, I've probably cried like t multiple times to this album. Um, it's just, Incredible. Um, yeah. I would take it to my grave if possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Don't to mind. me, this is the quintessential Sun Kill Moon album because I feel like it's a great middle ground for longtime fans of his older work, like Sun, uh, like Ghost of the Great Highway and some of the stuff from Red House Painters and uh, fans, his, his newer fans who were introduced to uh, him from certain people <laughs> fantano and i do f yeah <laughs> so um yeah the opening song uh carissa has marked joined by will oldham also known as bonnie prince billy on uh backup vocals which i feel like sets a pretty somber tone for the rest of the album um i can't live without my mother's love is up there with one of the few songs that have made me weep like a fucking baby it's just it it just shows how appreciative he is of his mother, and it like I don't know. It just makes me cry. Like it's it's so good and it's so heartfelt and raw, and also shows how he loves Scrabble at the same time. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, other fantastic songs include the kind of adverse to the previous song. Uh, I love my dad. The ten minute song. I love the or uh, I watch the film. The song remains the same. Uh, a, a serial killer blah, 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 I can't talk today either a serial killer portrait of the now deceased Richard Ramirez uh, with 
in the same song, he also sings about if he fucks too much, it feels like he's going to have a heart attack, which is a classic Mark Kozilek move. Uh, the brutally, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, the brutally honest quote unquote sex jam dogs. And uh, of course, what would a Sun Kill Moon album be without Mark telling the listener what groceries and food he's bought on the closer? Ben's my friend. Uh, that, my Blue that. crab cakes. What else is there really to um, say? You know. Uh, overall, this is a necessary listen to anybody hoping to dive into Kozilek's work. I think it's up there with uh, his first Red House Painters album, uh, Down Colorful Hill, stuff like that. And for fans of contemporary folk in general. Uh, with its gorgeous instrumentation and blunt lyricism, it hits the nail on the head as being one of the most deeply personal albums I've ever listened to. It's just fantastic. Uh, I'll go next. I'll get mine over and done with. Um, well, basically, I'd be repeating a lot of what Maureen just said, but all in all, I just I just love a lot of things about Benji. I think that it is an amazing record from Sun Kill Moon. And it would definitely, I would definitely say it would be the first record that you should listen to when getting into his music. I love, I love all of the songwriting on here. It's very personal, very detailed. It gets to the heart, makes me weep like a fucking, like a baby, and easily one of the best that I've heard from his catalogue. Instrumentally, this album is just gorgeous. The guitars just drip emotion, and the passion put personally into the lyrics and stuff like that is just mind blowing to me. There's nothing that really drags on to me about this album, unlike some other Sun Kill Moon albums. But there's just so much that I love about this record. And I'd just go on for hours and hours about this, and I'd be repeating what Maureen said, obviously. But all you need to know is that there's just peak songwriting here from Mark. And in my opinion, it is his best work under the Sun Kill Moon name. Alright, best and worst tracks, and we did it. Um, I'll start with mine since I'm, I'm the odd one out here. Okay. Uh, my favorite tracks on Ghost of the Great Highway were Glen Tipton, Gentle Moon, Pancho Villa, and then my third favorite Sun Kill Moon track of all time, uh, Duck Koo Kim. My second favorite Sun Kill Moon track of all time, Carry Me Ohio. And my favorite Sun Kill Moon track of all time, Salvador Sanchez. I do not have a least favorite. Um... My favorite tracks from Benji are Carissa, I Can't Live Without My Mother's Love, Truck Driver, Dogs, and I watched the film, the song remains the same. My least favorite track is Jim Wise. It's me, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, favorites, um, all of them, obviously. <laughs> um, and my least favorite is... I think truck driver, a truck driver. If I had to pick one, um, I keep I keep remembering points I wanted to make when I'm doing my best of tracks. Um, but I just wanted to point out that I think he does just a good of a job telling stories about himself as he does others. Um, mm. and I think it's it's laid out brilliantly too. Um, the album spends a lot of its time talking about the tragedies of life or whatever, um, and it's it sucks. Um, but then it hits you with a ray of hope at the very end with Ben's my friend. Um, which I think is actually the song that hits me the hardest. Um, is that this, despite all the darkness in our lives, there's there's hope. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well said. Maureen. So I, for best tracks, I'd probably pick all of them, except uh, Jim Wise, as Mickey also said, just because it feels like, like obviously the lyrical content is dark. It's about a guy who mercy kills his wife. But I feel like the instrumental is too playful for the tone of the album. Like with the keyboard kind of, you know. But that's just if I had to pick one. I still like it quite a bit. But, you know, if I had to pick one. Hmm. We did it. We did it. Hell yeah, we did it. <laughs> wow. um... So, so uh, yeah, we need to make a quick announcement about... um. About a quick thing, real quick. Um, we're just going to be taking a, a break for the next uh, couple of weeks. Um, Nostalgia, do you want to say why? Or uh, I have to attend a few Alcoholic Anonymous meetings. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I'm 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 going to be visiting my family for the first time in a few months. So yeah, I won't be having my computer or anything with me. So where are you going? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> going to see my family. Are you going to write an album about it? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your shopping list, or I will. Be the yeah, I will actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll have like I'll have my order in a fucking the taco <laughs> place. I always go to. I'll make sure and include all of it. And I, I'll include the assistant's name. I'll dox the assistant <laughs> at the shop as well. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should mention that he has a new album coming oh, yeah. out um, in yeah, the fall. He does. So yeah. if we yeah. had waited a, a bit longer, we would have been excluding that one too. No time to wait. Over no. I heard... Get... <laughs> yeah, I think I yeah. started on that. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to hear him talk about quantum theory to me over like a 23-minute guitar instrumental. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it's written before this whole thing started i don't know yeah it was probably it's probably not he probably just wrote it in the lab like he's probably hasn't written it yet he's probably gonna write it <laughs> he's probably just gonna yeah. talk about how bored he is at home <laughs> <laughs> about what's on telly <laughs> well um, um so yeah when we come back we're gonna be doing a uh, july recap and then i think the week after we're gonna be doing a modest mouse worst to best as well Ooh. And yeah, all in all, just thanks for checking out today's episode of the Taped Podcast. Necessary links are in the description, as always, like our album of the year, rate your music, our own individual channels. Um, go follow Maureen and Conor One on Album of the Year. And yeah, see ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.